Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Matt and it is terrible, ter not terrible Tuesday, I don't call it that anymore. Tis terrifying Tuesday, that's what I meant to say. Terrifying Tuesday and boy do I have a great one for you. But first and foremost, I want to wish each and every one of you a great morning, evening, dawn, day or dusk, all that wonderful stuff. Uh, and it's always great to see each and every one of your faces and please do like, share and subscribe. Uh, that does make me very, very happy and do always remember if you're new to the uh, to the crew, uh, um, I do take re uh, recommendations. Sometimes it takes me a little while to get to them. Uh, just depends on on what I have lined up already for for the next week or two, or sometimes even three. Uh, sometimes I get myself lined up for for exactly what I want to do. It's just a matter of which days on them. <clears throat> but anyways, oh, and also if you ever are interested, there is a um, link to a trailer in the description box. There. There's always a small brief synopsis and a, a, uh, a, a, a cast and crew director uh, information on that in the runtime of, of the cut that I am watching. Because sometimes some of these films uh, suffer from being cut throughout uh, uh, his, throughout the time and and things are lost along the way or or you find yourself buying another cut that that you didn't know was either a it was it, there was key scenes cut or b it was uncut one it could be one of each end of the spectrum <clears throat> now today's um i today's movie did suffer from some uh cutting from severe cuts as far as uh Gore gags go, uh, especially a key scene in, in particular. I'll get to that scene here in a little bit. Let's uh, at least get on to uh, the beginning of everything. So let's uh, see. This came out in 1977, so a couple years before I was born, three years to be precise. Uh, this is running at an hour and 35 minutes. Uh, like I said, this one probably suffered some cuts along, or it did, excuse me, it did uh, suffer some cuts along the way. Um, this is rated R, by the way, so it, it's a little different than some of the uh, the ones that I usually do. Some of those are usually not rated, or the occasional NC-17 or X-rated. You know, I do have a few of those in there, but they're not like pornographies. They're not porn. I'm not into porn. Anyways, uh, this one stars William Devane, uh, Tommy Lee Jones, who is amazing. If you guys don't know who Tommy Lee Jones is, you got to look him up. The guy's a top-notch actor. He's been in everything from this to Under Siege to The Park is Mine to uh, uh, what, what was that stupid one where... Oh shoot! The stupid one where he was the FBI agent, and he was um, uh, protecting the house full of cheerleaders. He that stupid movie to to No Country for Old Men. You know the guy has done some amazing films along the along the way. He's had a wonderful ride for as far as films. And this one, he's it, it's one of his uh, younger career. It's it, he's very very young in this. Uh, but not I mean. By standards, young. I think he was born in '46, and this came out. This came out in '77, so he was like 31 years old, something like that, 31 or 32 years old, uh, which is kind of funny is to say. Oh, he was so young in it because we know him more as a as an older actor, at least my generation, and and uh, uh, afterwards we know him as as an older actor. Uh, well, who else we got in here? We got Linda Haynes, uh, James White West, and oh, good old Dabney Coleman. I almost forgot he was in here. Um, he is very good at playing a, an asshole. I I don't know if it's if if he is one in real life, but uh, I have I have heard some th rumors here and there. Word around the campfire is he might be so. So some of his acting might not be necessarily acting at all. It just him being himself just delivering lines in different characters, unfortunately. Or in the same character, just uh, 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 different places in key times. And this one was, let's see, John Flynn directed this one. It is none other than Rolling Thunder. Yes, yes, yes. And by the way, if, if that name does sound familiar to you guys, uh, Quentin Tarantino at one point in time had a production company who released a lot of cult films, exploitation uh, uh, films of, of, of 
of the grindhousey grindhouse type stuff you know um that's where he got his influence on that and and uh he he released some really cool stuff and this is one of them one of my other favorites is switchblade sisters which is a very cool one it's one that i do have a copy of it but it's on a a uh, triple feature so it's it's eh, it's the qualities uh it's iffy even though it is a rolling thunder release uh, anyways, um, what is, let's, oh, I forgot, let's show you the release here, this is from Shout Factory, um, this is the, the only artwork that's available for as far as outer artwork, you open it up, it does have some artwork on the inside, but it is just some pictures, it's nothing spectacular, um, oh, excuse me, um, so yeah, there's no no reversible artwork on here. And as far as special features go, we got some inter we got some interviews with uh, William Devane, Tommy Lee Jones, uh, Paul Schrader, and Haywood Gould, who were both uh, um, writers on this. And then there's a trailer and then a TV spot for it. There you go, guys. If you wanted to take a gander at that, um, just a few things for as far as special features. Uh, like I said, this is a Shout Factory release. It is an older one. Um, I forgot to check to see if it's still around or in print. Um, if it is, do go ahead and check this out. I imagine it's probably, if it's in print, it's going to be probably a, a mid-range level on as far as costs go. I imagine it'll be anywhere from fifteen to twenty-two. You know, right around that range for as far is uh scream and shout factory go for their releases all right all right all right now now let's get on to the movie the film itself uh what is it about uh it's about this guy uh who uh major charles rain is his name he um is captured and is a POW for eight years in Vietnam, and they are, he is brutally beaten and tortured along and then along with his friend Tommy Lee Jones, uh, they are basically written off as dead. They're long gone. Uh, eventually, they're found. Blah 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 blah. That uh, um, that backstory you just get little fragments of it along the way. Uh, uh, but it is, it is known that, that he, he was a POW, that both of them were, uh, it's, it starts off right away with them, uh, board, or, uh, coming off of the airplane, uh, uh, from, from Vietnam getting, finally getting back to home and they're in their dress blues. Uh, they're all like cleaned up a little bit but they're still kind of they're battered and and torn and they're they're not their shell of of what they used to be before it's it's they're hollow now it's it's different now um both of them are tr are uh, greeted with a hero's welcome uh William Devane's character is given like $2200 or $2500 or something like that in in uh coins and he decides he's going to bury it, blah, 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 but the weird thing is that when he comes home, his wife in, has be, has moved on to another man, um, and there's, the son has no really real recollection or remembrance of of him as a father because he was gone for so long and he was so young when, when he uh, went away and never came back. So there's that whole thing going, and he decides, well, they work out an ordeal, and he he moves into the uh, uh, um, the garage, which is crazy to think that your ex ex husband would be living out in the garage while your 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 former wife and, or your while your new husband and your child from your ex husband are are living all under the same roof. It sounds like some some crazy like backwards backwoods Brady Bunch white trash type type scenario. <laughs> sounds like a trailer trash scenario. Nothing against people who live in trailer trailer parks. I'm just kidding. But um there's that whole scenario going on with there. And then um people these horrible, horrible people, they, they find out about it and they come and they kill everybody basically in the house. Um, they chop off, um, William Devane's hand in a garbage disposal. 
Now, when I said earlier about key scenes that were cut, that is one key scene. In For example, that was definitely suffered some cutting along the way. Because from what I've read, there were, they used uh, um, some lamb shanks and things like that. And, it, and it, the original take of it was extremely gory and, and bad and bloody. And so they it was um, uh, toned down a little bit, uh, a little more cut away from it. Uh, not quite so much uh, uh, sticking on the actual hand itself like I mean as far as your camera angle you're not staring at the at the the stump for very long you know you you just kind of see see uh, uh, it's it's mangled and that's about it um, but it uh, uh, is about him and his revenge on that uh, he goes down to Tijuana to find these folks I think it was Tijuana uh, because it, well no it wouldn't have been Tijuana because he's in uh, 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 San Antonio, Texas, I think, I believe is where he was from, but, um, it was, so it would have been somewhere down, um, just over, over the, uh, border of Texas. So, uh, what is that like Juarez and, and, uh, Chihuahua around there? I can't remember. Um, I once knew a lady from Chihuahua and she was one of the nicest ladies in the world. She was like a mother, you know, she was one of those motherly type ladies. Uh, she, she, uh, had a lot to say about Chihuahua and, and how crazy it gets there. It's, it's insane. I'll never visit it. <laughs> She's just trying to scare a gringo away though. I'm kidding. Um, anyways, now that, uh, I've gotten out of the way, what the movie is about, um, I don't want to give away any more key scenes in this one because it's one that you need to watch and watch it unfold in front of you because it does get uh, pretty uh, crazy at times and uh, there is uh, some cringy places in this movie not just counting the uh the hand down the garbage disposal disposal but there is a uh, scene in it uh, per that. Uh, uh, involves the new hooked hand and a man's groin. So if that lets you know anything, what happens with that scene, you'll you'll uh, you're not uh, in for any surprises. Those are those are two scenes in ex for example that I wanted to give away. Uh, I guess there was one other scene where where it to show. Um, how far gone William Devane's character is. He's uh, the new husband. This is before everybody, before all anything happens, before he loses his hand and, and everything like that. Um, he uh, um, he's decides the new the new husband t decides to come out to the garage and have a little chat with William Devane. And um, uh, basically have a little drink with him, see what's going on in his mind. Uh, you know, basically like, hey man, I'm sorry. I we thought you were dead. Uh, this uh, this didn't this this was something that t it was much much later before things started. It's not like you guys were together when this situation happened. One of those one of those ordeals. And um, he decides he's going to show him one of the one of the ways that he was tortured. And he he's his mind is so fra like broken into million pieces over it that that the guy like he has him do this this torture maneuver to him to William Devine vein um has him do it to himself and he wants him to do it even harder and harder and harder so to get to that same like feeling from what he had uh from from when he was a pow uh so that shows so shows uh where his mind at is as a person or as a character i mean um now, as far as any kind of technical uh, 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 ratings on this one goes, on a one through five, this is like a three as far as uh, um, technical ratings go. It's very standard by the book type film. Um, you have a beginning, middle, and end sequence. It definitely follows that to a key. There's no real huge plot holes or anything like that. Um, it uh, uh, explains itself rather well, I thought. Uh, it, uh, could have been, uh, probably another 10 minutes longer, in my opinion. You could have done a little more with, with a few more, with a few scenes in there. Or, uh, um, maybe that was there and they, it just got cut. I don't know. 
Anyways, um, as far as an entertainment thing goes, this one is a 4 out of 5. It, so this thing is like a 7 out of 10 type of movie. This is solid. There's a reason why Tarantino um, put so much behind this one when he had his, his label. Um, and that's why so many people, older, the older generation of, of uh, exploita exploitation, grindhouse, cult film connoisseurs, they talk about this one. And this is one that, that deserves a little more talk by, by people of my generation and, and younger for sure because this is a uh, stand-up classic of, of a revenge thriller. Um, nice little action pieces in there. Uh, uh, fits fits perfectly with um, how we've been going with the week week so far white fire had some revenge aspect to it so why not have a little more revenge with rolling thunder yeah all right guys i'm gonna get the hell out of here i got some things to do for the day i hope each and every one of you have a great day uh i'll see you tomorrow and as always